just wanted to tell you that story, and now I'm going to move on to what I'm supposed to talk to you about. Okay, okay. next slide. <laughs> okay, enough about you. Let's talk about me. <laughs> These are my parents. Uh, my father originally from Basra, Iraq. Uh, born and raised there and uh, did well enough at Baghdad University College of Sciences to earn a government scholarship to do his studies overseas. He came to the United States, actually, to the D.C. area, and where he met another graduate student, a nice Jewish girl from New York. And so, yeah, funny. Um, <laughs> basically, the take-home message here, and while the groups of Arabs and Jews are not mutually exclusive, there are Arab Jews. Um, uh, my mother's Ash Ashkenazi Jew, and with an Arab father and Jewish mother, I am 100% Semite. So this being the Semite, yes, this being the topic on racism, you can insult either side of my family, and that would be anti-Semitic, but there's no Q&A here, so let's move on. Uh, next slide, please. Now, uh, my parents were married in 68, had my sister in 69, and then their lives dramatically improved when I came along. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy over what's happening here um, this weekend, but I think even those individuals who are protesting the truth outside can agree that I was a very cute baby. Very cute baby right here. <laughs> Now the reason, I, thank you, thank you. Um, the reason I'm showing this slide is not just for the um, gratuitous applause, but I appreciate that. Um, from the, for any of us, the uh, memories we have of our childhood from the time before our brains could make memories are from the pictures. And when I was little, in order for my dad to pay back that government scholarship he was on, he taught at Basra University for five years. So the first five years of my life were between Iraq and New York. So this is me at six months old. I don't remember this picture being taken, but when you talk to me about Iraq, this is the image I think of. But unfortunately, thanks to very effective dehumanization in the American media, next slide, this is what people think of. Swarthy, dark, mustached, evil man, dictator worse than Hitler. Now, I'm not going to defend the regime. There's no question about the ruthlessness of the dictatorship. But we have to remember that pick any country around the world, and it's made up of families. And it's those families who pay the price for what happens. Next. Oh, there's a quick blurb for me. Okay, next. <laughs> so just defining it, racism is the belief that race accounts for differences in human character or ability, and that a particular race is superior to others. Uh, or it's discrimination or prejudice based on race, denial of the other's humanity. We do not respect them as human beings. And any one of us can define an other. Now, I, don't, I can't be sure if that's what was happening yesterday, but I thought it was very interesting in the discussion yesterday of Blackwater. It was a distinction that I think we in this room could make that we are not Blackwater. And we were, I was, happy to applaud that they were being... Uh, uh, brought to justice for the crimes of September 17, 2007. We have to remember, it doesn't make much difference to uh, the Iraqi people who's firing the weapons that kill their families. Um, but anyway, I just want to point that out for, you know, defining the other. Next. So we already talked about uh, dehumanization, the enemy, the names uh, used in Vietnam for the Vietnamese people. I know the number 58,000, but it wasn't until recently that I knew that over 3 million Vietnamese were killed during that time. And the same goes for Iraq. We've already heard the names used. Uh, it's now uh, over 1.2 million and counting as we speak. Um, it's also important to point out that uh, we condemn Saddam Hussein, and rightly so, for allegedly killing 300,000 over 30 years. We have now more than quadrupled the number in under five. Now, we're all about winning in this country, but this was not a contest we wanted to win. Basically, for that other, lives are disposable. Next. Just very briefly, I will touch on, um, and I'm not really the expert on it, I just want to touch on uh, racism within the military. Uh, uh, for example, um, Mexican families who want to come here to, oh, I'm going to have to hurry. I'm going to take more time. Um, who want to come here to build uh, a better life for themselves. If they are caught at the border without papers, they're going to be detained uh, or maybe beaten. They're going to be sent back home. However, if you choose to enlist in the U.S. military to be deployed overseas for corporate profit, 
They will accelerate your citizenship application. Give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, and we will put them in the military and send them overseas to die for Halliburton. Next slide. Now, in this slide, this is, uh, this is <laughs> citizenship. Welcome to America at Al Fao Palace, Baghdad. Now, if you look at this picture, the guy in the middle is the general, and all the brown people are the new citizens. <laughs> you notice that the immigrants who get accelerated, uh, it indicates that it's not Irish immigrants who need accelerated uh, uh, citizenship. Not Europeans, <clears throat> mostly from minority areas. Next. Disposable Iraqis, again, disposable, designed to be used once and then thrown away. General Tommy Franks in 2003. We don't do body counts. I mean, they don't even count the number for the, the Pentagon doesn't even count the number of American dead accurately. We shouldn't expect, if they're not going to do that, we're not going to expect any better for Iraqis. Colin Powell. Colin Powell was mentioned yesterday, Joint Chiefs, uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff during the first Gulf War. Colin Powell said, civilian Iraqi casualties, it's really not a number I'm terribly interested in. Now, it was referred, he was referred to as being um, respected. Colin Powell is a liar. He was a tool that was used to get us into Iraq. At the time that we were getting ready to invade Iraq, the Guernica that Dr. Appi referred to, the Guernica picture at the UN had to be covered. The whole point was to put it there to avoid war, but they covered it up at the backdrop. Um, and Colin Powell got his start. He, uh, was, uh, he had a desk job during the Vietnam War. It was his job to do cover-ups uh, of massacres like Me Lai and uh, everything else that went on. So no love from Dahlia for Colin Powell. Next slide. We have to stay and help. There is an element of white man's burden in this. How are these people going to wander through the desert without us? And this is, I'm telling you, this is not, uh, I'm not going to blame the, the right on the, uh, for this. This is mostly, uh, I, I will hear this in the progressive community. I know we have to leave, but I'm just afraid of what will happen when we go. Next slide. Okay, we have less than 300 years of history. And, and I don't even know how much of that you can count as democracy, okay? If you've seen our last few elections. They have more than 7,000 years of civilization. Who needs whose help? What if Iraqis spoke Oxford English, which some of them do, doesn't matter. What if Iraqis were a 94% Christian country instead of 94% Muslim? What if Iraqis were white? There was a comment made yesterday, and I really, I'm so happy I had the chance to um, speak to the veteran uh, before this session. And um, what I took from the statement was that uh, Iraqis have a, a different culture with different morals. And what I walked away from that with was that somehow that we had better morals in this country than they do. But um, for myself and for him, I wanted to clarify that um, even the what the brainwashing that you go through in the military can kick in in a moment of stress, which believe me, this is a moment of stress. Um, and uh, that's kind of the attitude that was presented, but um, it was, um, we had a really good conversation, so just to clarify that it is a different way of doing things, and the point was we have no right to impose ourselves onto anybody else. Next slide. Um, I know I'm out of time. I'm going to use the next five minutes if I could. Are you okay with me doing that? That's fine. Thank you. Um.